The following preview has been rated good by the Good, the Bad, and the Weird podcast. Please check out the full episode when it comes out on Sunday. Yes. In this podcast, no one can hear you scream unless you are in the car with someone or listening with them. Then I hope they are cool with dealing with your screaming. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing Alien. Yeah. I try, I've been trying to pull, rip off the trailers a little bit more, but there's not a lot of talking in these trailers. So. There's not, honestly, there's not a lot of talking in this whole movie. <laughs> no, not really. And I think that's the that's one of the better parts of it, too. No, it really is. Because, honestly, the fastest way to shoot yourself in the foot as a movie is to have dated dialogue. Uh, well, in some uh, regards. On top of having a cell phone. Yeah, oh, God, <laughs> I... We, at one point, we'll have to do one missed call. Oh, yeah, for sure. The American one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we, we did Alien this, uh, we're doing Alien this week. One of, uh, both of our all-time favorites and classics. Yeah, you know, it's Alien season. Fourth of July's rolling around. Mm-hmm. Time to look to the skies. And who better than Phallic Daddy himself? Yes. <laughs> I, I hate that you call the Xenomorph Phoenix Phallic Daddy. That's what he is, though. Just like Predator is Tentacle Daddy. I mean, technically Kane's daddy. That's... Or is Kane mommy? Uh, I don't know. Is it its own mom? I think it might be. Or its own father. It does the penetration. Yeah. Or penetrating. I would say I am my own worst dad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I... We, we talk about it more in the episode, but this movie is like one of my... I think this really is my true introduction to horror when I was a kid. Um, it's not like Jurassic Park where I it was scared. I was scary and I watched it too young. Mm-hmm, this was mm-hmm, truly mm-hmm. the first horror horror movie I'd seen as a kid. And this to me still stands as one of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time. Yes. Um, yeah, and especially compared to like, we've had a weird like slur- um, slurry of good sci-fi movies that have been coming out but yeah and like i i like the sci-fi genre but or sci-fi set i would say yes i will agree there but i have a hard time when someone says well what's your favorite sci-fi it, 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 there's so many that are just good this well, one this one truly stands above to that i will i will pull from uh the great sage, Nicolas Cage. Uh, yes, what has he said? And the unbearable weight of massive talent. Uh-huh. When asked what his favorite movie of all time is, he says, well, in this world where we have such a rich history of film, mm-hmm. film history, how, how can you just pick one? Let's do three. <laughs> That's a fair statement. <laughs> it is. That is a fair statement. But this movie manages to elevate both sci-fi and horror mm-hmm. in a way that, like, Honestly, we really, like, there's nothing else to compare it to. This is, like, almost, this is the best piece of horror art in film. Yeah, which is due to Ridley Scott. 100%. I mean, well, him and Giger, I'd say. Giger is, has quickly become one of my most, like, I am so fascinated by Mm -hmm. this artist. Like, both what he makes and him as a person yeah. just really encompasses this movie. Yeah. And if you don't know Giger, Giger, is, Giger designed the Xenomorph um, and all, a lot of the concept artwork for the alien stuff, um, which he does mention that they could, they didn't fill his, his design exactly, but he said they did a good enough job with it. And, and when we say design, normally when we talk about monster design, mm-hmm. it's someone who like, they design stuff. Yeah. They design things for movies. This is his art that they asked him to rework mm-hmm. into this movie. Some of it was. But at least, like, the idea of it. the Like, it is his style. Yeah, they, they've definitely made it less penis-y. Yeah. Yeah, And there's a lot less alien boobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's... There's normal boobs. A lot less alien boobs. Yeah, and it's... It's it's aggressive. And we've, we brought up in the episode that it's sexual... His work is sexually aggressive... But it's it's a different the way they brought it up. The movie does adapts that aggression mm-hmm. is way different than one of his paintings, and yes. it's it's a much more visceral, real. And I think that's I'm gonna say 100 percent down is due to practical effects. Oh, uh, completely. The there's a reason why this movie still looks good, mm-hmm. and it's because everything, even though it is practical effects, and honestly because it is practical effects, has aged well, and also mm-hmm. like. There is a texture and, like, 
a visualness to practical effects yeah. that, like we still haven't quite gotten with CGI, even after all these years. Oh yeah, I mean, and I've watched the newer Alien movies too, and they're they they really don't hold a candle. The only one I'd say holds like the same level of revere as Aliens. Sure. For a whole different reason, and switching genres, doing something differently. Yeah. But part of this one too, I think I think why this one really holds up is not only you talked about dated language. But it sets up a mystery and answers that we want rather than mm-hmm. like, well, that was stupid. Why did they do that that way? It's like, no, there, there's no character building in this at all. It's exactly. all world building. And it's very minimal world building in the fact, too, that like we're presented with like 20 different mysteries and zero answers. Yes. And the other genius of this movie that really, like, especially for a horror setting, mm-hmm. makes it stand out is... At no point was the writers or directors trying to reinvent the horror wheel. They mm-hmm. already had, they were already pulling from so many places that, like, they already knew not to let one of the characters, like, the characters be, like, the stupid people. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone feels purposeful. There is, even though you know later it's the bad choice or it is the wrong answer, mm-hmm. it's not It's not a, well, I heard a ghost in the kitchen. I'm going to go find out what it is. Yeah, exactly. It's not like, oh, it's not a Sco- it's not a Scooby Doo mystery. It's not a Scooby Doo mystery. Like everyone feels like they, even though they are ill equipped and not prepared for this, mm-hmm. they do feel realistic. They feel yes. purposeful. Yes, and that that's the other thing too is like just the level of realism that Scott brought to everything in this mm-hmm. movie, and that's what and that uh, honestly for me that's where all these any adaptations or live action movies where it where they shine. Is comes down to this exact same concept of it's it's part of the realism that's brought to it. No, I, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Like in um, As the God Wills. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Actually, it's been a while since I've talked about him, Takashi Miike. Uh huh. <laughs> and also with his adaptation of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, for being extreme series, he grounds them and makes them mm-hmm. more believable than yeah a lot of the stuff we see like there was one sci-fi movie i was watching with uh i think i think i watched it with micah when i was still living in nebraska um where it was just so over the top it was about a space prison and like oh hell yeah everyone breaks out and stuff and it's just like it was so like weird like the guy like leaped and gravity changed or some shit like uh, that Ah, yes and, and like, don't be wrong this movie is next level crazy Mm -hmm. but it it has grounded itself in its own world in a way where it's using our rules yeah that it's not asking you to suspend your like belief of everything you know to Mm -hmm. enjoy this film it's asking you to hold on to those so that way you can feel what these characters feel exactly and so yeah i think i think that's i think that's the biggest standing point of alien is that so grounding it is so grounding and also like even if you haven't like seen it or haven't seen mm-hmm. it in a very long time, you still remember the imagery from this. You still remember what the chest burster looks like, exactly. what the face hugger looks like. Like there is something to be said about a movie that can that strongly imprint on you the like the monsters that it creates. Yeah, the, the probably the best personification of cosmic horror that we've seen in a long especially or... especially one where you like actually see the mm-hmm. aliens and granted like the large alien we don't see all of it in this movie mm-hmm. we see most of it though and like you see all of the face hugger you see most of the chest burster i guess you could argue you say all of it while it scurries away yeah and like there is something to be said about actually seeing the cosmic horror and still finding it scary. Exactly. And rewatching it and still finding it terrifying. Yeah. So, but, yeah. But, anywho, this has been the Good, the Bad, and the Weird previews. Check out the full episode. Peace!